What's up guys, Mason with Brock Anderson here, and this is Prison Break Resurrection Season 1, Episode 6, Faisha. So, obviously, once again, I've fallen very, very far behind. Uh, weekend got busy, and then Monday and Tuesday this week I had to work, so, yeah, I didn't have any time to catch up on my shows, and on top of that, I missed quite a few of my shows this week, so, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's a lot. So, first of all, let's talk about Prison Break from last week. Uh, this one sort of starts off with, I guess, another another moment of prison break, I guess, cliche, where we see they're talking to, I think his name is Omar, um, they're talking to him, you know, Lincoln is like, I can trust this guy because, you know, Sheba said we could trust this guy, and so he's like, well, I know this place that I can take you guys, but you gotta go get the other truck because I don't have enough room. Somehow he managed to contact the people I really don't understand how this happened. Um, I, it, it was like, they, they go to talk to him, and he's like, how dare you, like, you, you really think you can come to me after this? You're like one of the most mon wanted men in the country. And it's like, okay, fine, I'll take you, but go get this other truck. But there's not, the battery's dead or something like that, so you got to work on getting it out here. And so they get in there, and Lincoln turns it on. He's like, oh, wait, the battery's fine. This is the setup. As we see that guy, Omar, knock out Whip. And then all of a sudden the rebel, sh or well, ISIL shows up and then starts shooting at them. So I really don't know when he contacted ISIL or if he, if maybe they contacted him before and then he contacted ISIL while he was waiting for them to arrive. Or if they just said, you know, look, if they ever come talk to you, send them to this place and we'll be there. And so that's what he did. But I, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know how they showed up there. But... Like I said, it is kind of a prison break cliche now where, oh, we can trust this guy. Oh, no, wait, we can't trust this guy. And then they get through the trap. Oh, we can trust this guy again. Prison break, <laughs> where you can trust somebody until you can't, until you can't, until you can't. It just happens again and again and again. And honestly, it's getting a little old. I just, I realize that that's part of it, you know, that people are untrustworthy at times. But at some point, you kind of have to say, okay, we don't trust anybody anymore until you prove that we can trust you. And even then, don't make it to where they prove that they can trust them, but then still betray them in the end, because then it just, it gets it gets too much, is pretty much what I'm trying to say. Um, so anyway, they managed to get out of there, uh, but of course I saw hot on their tracks because the two people that work for Poseidon managed to get out of prison, uh, but then somehow end up getting into the NSA. Uh, apparently the the girl of the two used to work at NSA and then on top of that apparently she had a fling with, an, a fling with another woman that works at NSA. And so they managed to get in to sort of use the drones to track where our heroes are. So they finally find them use, using the drone and then the guy contacts ISIL and says hey we know where to find them and so that's how they end up following them. So they've find him at this gas station where Michael's talking to somebody. Uh, I think that the two Poseidon agents found him at the end wearing the Elvis thing. I don't know who the hell this is and I don't know why he's dressed up as Elvis and I don't know what any of that means. But we see him trying to talk to somebody and then all of a sudden you know, it, it's like well I can't see you on the camera. I don't know why they did that. But then ISO shows up, so they have to somehow get out of there. Well, luckily, there happens to be a gas truck parked right near where all the ISO agents are, and they only have one bullet. So, gee, I wonder what's going to happen. He shoots the gas truck, it blows up, and they manage to escape, but not before Omar gets shot. So, they start driving through the desert, and then all of a sudden, Michael stops and says, Our map is dead. And so, they realize that that one guy that they handcuffed to Sid in the last episode is still following them because he has a huge grudge against them. So he starts shooting at them with the AK, and then they realize that he's been following them using their tracks, and on top of that, he has a lot of gas, and they do not. So Michael comes up with a plan to say, all right, so three of you, or three of us will take one of the trucks with the supplies to Phaeacia, and then the other one will drive off into the desert and make what's-his-name follow us. And so he's like, well, I've got three red rocks and one white rock. Whoever gets the white rock has to drive off, so he drops in each of their hands and they all get red rocks and of course Michael's the one with the white rock. It ends up being a red rock because of course Michael's going to sacrifice himself anyway. So 
they get to Faisha, and of course they're like, well, we still got to get Michael here somehow. Michael, meanwhile, is driving off. All of a sudden, in this one moment, I don't even know how this happened, uh, but there's a moment where <clears throat> the guy is following him, and all of a sudden he loses him out of nowhere. Just like, okay, how did that happen? And so then he pulls out his gun, gets out of his car, he hears something in the distance, so he goes up to the top of this little, um, I guess, rock formation, and sees the truck, Michael's truck, driving off. So he gets back into his truck, <clears throat> drives after him, and then all of a sudden it stops. And so he finally catches up to it, he goes in there, and he opens it up, and it's a rock, of course, because that's the only way that it would be driving by itself. But all of a sudden Michael's on the back of his truck, on the tire. I don't know how he did that. We didn't see it. We don't know how he managed to sneak around and get on the side, on the back of his truck. They didn't explain it. They just said, oh yeah, he's he's there now. That's, that's just how it is. He's there. Enough said. So, of course, he gets into his truck and tries to drive off, but unfortunately it doesn't work, so the guy starts shooting at him. Well, Michael grabs a screwdriver and they fight, fight, fight. He grabs a screwdriver again, stabs him in the eye, but not before this guy grabs a piece of the truck that was shot off and stabs Michael in the stomach. And so now he's driving the, the truck around, trying to find the tracks, finally does find the tracks, but unfortunately I guess one of the shots managed to mess up something in the, the radiator possibly because it starts smoking. And so Michael gets out and he starts trying to find his way to Faisha and just as it looks like he's finally out of, like, out of time, he's out of breath, he's out of blood, all of a sudden, he hears fireworks. He looks up, and they're shooting fireworks off uh, from Faisha. And so he finds his way there. Um, Lincoln's calling for him, doesn't hear him at first, and then at the last second, does hear him. So he goes to find him and finds him right before Michael passes out, presumably from lack of blood. So all in all, you know, it's just that that's pretty much it. It's just them trying to find this place where, I guess, from there, they'll manage to make it out. Uh, but there's never any doubt, really, and I think that's probably the one thing that I do have to complain about is there's not really that much tension. You know, with the when Prison Break was originally on, it felt like not only oh who's gonna die because they killed off a few characters that were they felt like main characters. Um, so it was kind of like well who's gonna survive this? But on top of that, there was something to lose. You know. You're trying to break out of prison. You're trying to get out of there and clear Lincoln's name because he was found guilty of a crime he didn't commit. And so it, it felt like there was something to lose in all of this. You know, what if they end up going back to prison? What if Michael ends up not being able to get Lincoln out? Now it just feels like, oh, we're in a country. At first it sounds like an interesting idea. We're in a country. We're trying to escape from this country. But then all of a sudden it's like every single moment where it feels like, oh, we've hit a brick wall. There's a, there's a way out. There's always a way out. And even when it's not Michael forcing his way out, somebody else will step in and somehow save them. Even though, you know, like the, the one scene where uh, Amal ends up, like, completely outwitting Michael somehow. Sees his plan to kind of get Ja to get these guns. He outwits him. He has them all down on their knees, ready to execute him. All of a sudden, Lincoln shows up and just threatens them and then they end up killing him and it's just like that moment it felt like there's no way out and all of a sudden there's a way out in this one that guy is chasing them and they're running out of gas and it feels like you know okay so how do they get out of this well michael has this plan it's like okay so somebody's gonna sacrifice himself and so we see michael driving off without a lot of gas the guy's still following him he's got an ak-47 michael doesn't have any weapons i'm just like how's he gonna get out of this and it doesn't seem like there is a way out and then all of a sudden he, he disappears, ends up on the back of the guy's truck while the guy follows the truck that's being held down by a rock, and then they fight, and then Michael wins the fight. And I'm just like, there's, it, there never feels like there's not a way out. It never feels like, oh, they're done. Because you always get this sense of, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to find a way out. And while I don't complain about the fact that, you know, obviously if they couldn't find a way out, then the show would be over very quickly. You know, if Michael got trapped somewhere and didn't survive, then... Yeah, this show would be over. But make it seem like okay, if you're going to if you're going to have him escape from difficult situations, show us how he's doing it. Show us how he managed to 
not only disappear his truck and the track so the guy couldn't follow him anymore, but also show us how he managed to sneak around and get on the back of the guy's truck without him seeing, and how did the guy not notice him getting on the back of his truck, because, you know, all we see is we see him looking around with his gun, he sees Michael's truck, and then it cuts off, and the next thing we know, he's following him again. How did he get on the back of the truck? When the guy turned around, shouldn't he have seen him on the back of the truck? These things don't get explained, and it's, it's kind of like, why? Why aren't you going to explain that? Because that's a big part of this show, is these impossible escape moments, these possible, these impossible moments of, he's in a very tight spot, he can't get out, and now he is out. You have to show us that. You have to show us the workings of how that happened. But if you don't, then it's just like, oh, well, they're in a difficult situation, they're going to get they're going to get out of it. They're going to escape this difficult situation. How they do it most of the time doesn't even matter. It's just like one moment they're stuck, it doesn't look like they're going to make it out, and then the next moment they are out. So, yeah, I I hate to say it because honestly, this is a show that I really I want to be really really good because the original show is really really good. But right now they're just kind of throwing the same thing at us week after week. You know, what was last week's episode about? They're trying to get out of the city. They're trying to escape. They're trying to make it home. What was this week's episode about? They're trying to get out of the city. They're trying to escape. They're trying to make it home. What's next week's episode going to be about? I don't know. Maybe they'll start it off with them actually getting out of the country, but it feels like, once again, they're going to be stuck in the country trying to escape, trying to get home. At some point, you just have to say, all right, so... What's this season about? Is it about them breaking out of prison? No, they've already done it. Is it about them getting out of the country? No, they're probably about to. Is it about this whatever Poseidon guy that's trying to stop him? Probably, but we're hardly seeing much of that. It's kind of like an out outside story at this point. So, uh, as far as that goes, the the Poseidon story, uh, like I said, it mainly followed these two agents. We learned a little bit more about them. Uh, just you know, they they did some story building on them. But we see that this uh, the Asian guy that's working at the Department of Defense took over Kellerman's job. Uh, but like I said, when we first heard about Poseidon, it made it feel like he was Poseidon. You know, they asked, well, then who is Poseidon? And then it cut to that guy at the Department of Defense. It's like, oh, it's him, whoever that guy is. And once again, like we see these, we see the the woman agent. No, we see him call the woman agent. And so it's almost like, okay, so they are in cahoots, maybe. Because then what he says, and then what she says after that, it's almost like she's talking about Poseidon, and it's not him. So I'm, I'm kind of confused. I don't know if they're trying to convince us that he is Poseidon when he's not actually, or, you know, obviously there was that one moment where we saw D-Bag take a picture of Jacob talking to these two agents, so they've still got that possibility that he might be Poseidon, but I don't know. I... I'm kind of lost as far as that story goes, and throwing in this weird Elvis impersonator doesn't help either. Uh, <clears throat> but I guess all in all, it's still it's still interesting because there are a lot of questions aren't being answered. There are a lot of mysteries still involved. So I'm still curious to find out how this is all going to end, what's going to happen, why did Michael fake his death, all that stuff. Um, I still want to know more and more, but at the same time, there are a lot of cliches that are getting a bit frustrating and it is starting to feel very familiar episode after episode, so I know it's only six episodes in, but I do want to start to see some improvement in the next couple episodes, because if not, it could be a very, very boring long season leading up to finally what we've been waiting for throughout the entire season, so hopefully they get into some more of the good, juicy stuff next episode, but I guess we'll see, so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, what were your thoughts on this episode, let me know what we can talk about and discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future Prison Break Resurrection reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.